Now that we have a good random number generator that gives us an abundant supply of IID standard uniform deviates and we have the ability to transform them into any non-uniform deviate that we like, we are in a position to solve uh, structural reliability problems. So here is the algorithm uh, in broad terms. Uh, we select the structure, identify the failure mode, that's the top box that you see in this flow chart. Uh, and then we define the limit states. We have gone through these steps, but putting these together once more. Uh, we simulate the basic variables and then ask the question or verify, uh, has the structure failed? Now, obviously there uh, would be, uh, could be hidden a very detailed finite element analysis uh, and which would take a lot of time uh, in some cases. But once we do that, uh, we can count if failure has occurred or not and we can keep count of that and then repeat the loop that you see uh, on, uh, on the left with the red arrow and once we are out of the loop, we can obtain estimates of failure probability. Uh, on the left you see uh, the need to input uh, the statistical properties, so that's something we need to keep in mind. And then uh, once we are done with all of this, the estimated failure probability would be the average of uh, these counts. Uh, and uh, if we are interested in confidence interval, how much uh, how many samples to run and so on. So that uh, answer could be obtained from the confidence, confidence interval or the, uh, the coefficient of variation of the estimate. Uh, you could have uh, another side loop there uh, where we could use efficient sampling information, which is something we're going to look at in the next lecture. So uh, we could uh, enhance this direct Monte Carlo or basic Monte Carlo or brute force Monte Carlo method uh, by bringing in efficient sampling information uh, which could be a bias sampling like important sampling which could be an adaptive sampling uh, and, and so on. In fact if you do all of that then that simple uh, PF as the average of the I uh, would not work in most cases. So we have to keep that in mind also. And that's why you see uh, in the last red block, uh, we have count number of failures adjust for efficient sampling. So that's the reason that we have that qualifier. Uh, now let us solve um, a couple of examples. Uh, the first one would be uh, the uh, safe stopping problem that we solved earlier. Uh, in this course. Uh, so here is the problem statement. Uh, we have a vehicle traveling at a certain speed on a road and it must be able to stop within the distance provided. Otherwise there is going to be collision. So uh, this is the, uh, the demand and capacity description. The demand is a uh, an empirical formula in terms of the speed, the reaction time, the friction coefficient, the grade, and so on. And the supply distance is what is given as part of the geometry of the, uh, of the road design. The safety margin is uh, S supply minus S uh, demand. Uh, and here are the definitions of all these parameters. Uh, some of these, three of these actually will be treated as random variables uh, in this exercise. Uh, and here are the uh, numerical values, both the design values and the distribution parameters uh, for the three random variables in question, uh, VA, T and FA. Uh, and now the question is, uh, given a particular value of the supplied side distance, uh, which is 140 meters, uh, what would be the probability of failure when failure is defined 
as inability to stop within that distance. Uh, the, the three random variables, uh, T is normal, uh, VA is log normal and FA is viable with the parameters defined in the table at the top. Uh, so let us uh, solve this um, with Monte Carlo simulations and the code uh, is in the next uh, slide and I'm going to go uh, line by line through that code. So uh, let us uh, first define all the parameters of the problem. So uh, the supplied side distance in meters, uh, the mean of the speed, the COV of the speed from which we get the log normal parameters. Uh, we have to be careful in defining these and you will see that uh, instead of uh, using function calls uh, in MATLAB or equivalent programming languages uh, to call uh, and directly get uh, the desired random deviate in one step. Uh, I prefer to write out and use uh, the more basic uh, commands partly because um, this, this way we can um, take it to a new language which might not have that same function call for one and the other it is easier for the student to follow what's going on. So uh, we have defined these log normal parameters. Next we define the parameters for t. Uh, next we uh, define and then derive the viable parameters uh, which um, we um, just go through these few commands uh, to get uh, the u and the k, the shape and the scale parameters of the viable distribution. Uh, so now we are ready uh, to start the loop. So the count is the um, counter for number of failures. Uh, we have 1 million uh, Monte Carlo trials. Uh, that's what we have set. So we start the loop and um, so it's a for loop in MATLAB. Uh, we run it from i equals 1 through NMCT. So uh, we first generate the VA, the speed, which is a log normal random variable. So we first generate the standard normal, rand n, and then uh, scale that with sigma log and then add the mean log and exponentiate the whole thing. That gives us a log normal VA. Next, we generate the normal T again with the rand n command. Uh, and then uh, we generate the uh, viable F. And there also we have used the uh, inverse CDF approach. So with all of these, we are now uh, able to compute the demand through that empirical formula. Uh, and once we have the demand, we can compare with the available side distance. So there we have the if block and the if block uh, make sure that failure has happened or not. So if the demand exceeds the capacity, the failure count is incremented by one. So that's the end of the if loop. And that's the end of the for loop. And we can uh, count, we can estimate PF uh, as the average of the indicator functions, count divided by NMCT. Uh, and the answer that we get from this exercise, uh, I ran the code, uh, the estimated PF is about 0 0.0025, which is small enough probably um, and the COV of the estimate uh, we can estimate that uh, as the square root of 1 over NP and that turns out to be a very small number 2% so uh, we should be able to accept this answer.